Believe it or not, I actually have a camera in my pocket right now. No, it's not my smartphone. It's actually this. If you want to find out what this little guy is and learn more about it, then stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. Jay from JP Videos here, back with a brand new product review. Today we're checking out the Fiotech Pocket Gimbal. This is a combination of camera and three axis motorized gimbal all in one. In this video, I'm gonna show you what you get in the box, explain how it works, more importantly, demonstrate its performance. Lastly, I'll let you know my thoughts and how you can get your own. So let's get started. Okay, so right off the bat, I do wanna tell you that this was sent to me free for review. There's no paid sponsorship or endorsement. So good or bad, I'm gonna tell you my thoughts about it. Now, when you get this in the mail, it does come nicely packaged in a white box as a pull off sleeve inside the box you're going to find a little packet of basic instructions to get you started the gimbal itself a lanyard and everything is nicely packaged came protected and ready to go even came with a fully charged battery also included is your usb-c charging cable now the main thing that i noticed is that this comes with a protective case as i showed it already it does come with a nice plastic hard plastic biotech protective case to put the gimbal inside of inside there is felt to keep it nice and uh, protected from any scratches but it is a pretty hard durable plastic the good thing about it too is right here on the outside of it on the back side there is an opening so you can actually charge the gimbal while it's inside the case it's a nice little added feature there makes it more convenient so you can charge it on the go in your car or in your backpack and don't have to worry about the gimbal getting damaged now to take the gimbal out, all you do is lift the little flap here, pull it out sideways, and there it is. This is the unit as a whole, very small and compact and discreet, takes up very minimal room in your pocket, in your backpack, and hard to believe that this little guy can actually shoot up to 4K 60 frames a second. Also shoots 2.7K and 1080p, which we are filming in today. I do film all my content in 1080p. It's just easier to edit and presents better on TV for those who don't have 4K televisions. So on the outside of it, you do have a couple buttons. On the right side, there is a power button. All you do is long press that to turn it on. On the front, you do have a red shutter button to start and stop recording, also the snapshot photos, and your M button, your mode button, to switch between different modes, like as pan, follow, all follow, so on and so forth. Left-hand side is your USB-C charging port. And below is the slot for the micro SD card, which does not come with one. You will need to provide your own. On the bottom, though, there is a nice little added feature. There is a quarter inch thread to attach this to a tripod or a selfie stick to get more maneuverability to do a kind of talking face video like this or to reach up to higher places. Now, there is a Fiotech app for this, which allows you to unlock more features and to use your phone as a remote, to use it remotely. So you could place this on a tripod and use your phone to pull up the image to see what the camera sees, start and stop recording, change the frame rates, uh, do slow motion, time lapse, hyperlapse. <clears throat> you can also do, I believe, tracking, and it has uh, panoramic photos, a lot of additional options that are out there through the app. But personally for me, when I use equipment, I like to keep it simple and basic. I don't like to use third-party apps or software, so I'm gonna be using the camera just how it is, but the app is available for iOS and Android. You can download it and unlock more features if you want to get more options out there for using your Fiotech Pocket Gimbal. Also available on the app and the Fiotech website is a downloadable, fully detailed instruction manual to let you know how everything works, what everything does, and to get you some maybe answers to your questions. But for the most part, it is pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna go through and show you the basic modes and functions as to how this operates. Very simple. Once you use it one or two times, you pretty much have it down pat. Now to power it on, you're just going to long press the power button. You'll hear a few beeps and the gimbal will center itself. And you're basically ready to go at that point. Now the screen is touch sensitive. That's how you unlock more features within this camera itself. So if you slide from left to right, that'll bring you to your recent files that you recorded. To go back, you just swipe back the opposite direction. If you swipe from right to left, You'll see photo mode, video mode, slow-mo, time-lapse, pano. And within those options, you can adjust the 
particular settings. So for video, if you press on it, you have 1080p, 16 by 9, 2.7, uh, 4k and also, also the frames per second which is down from 30 frames all the way up to 60 frames now for 1080 16 by 9 you can go down as low as 24 frames a second and all the way up to 120 frames a second depending on what type of video you're shooting and your suitability for more cinematic looking or more fast-paced slow motion stuff okay so if you swipe up from the bottom to the top you do get a few features here to recenter Change the orientation to face it on you like a selfie. You can change between motion or for smoothness when you're walking around for the sensitivity of the gimbal itself. You can also change between the different modes, which will also be featured and changed through the mode button itself. I will demonstrate that. Now when you swipe down from top to bottom, you will get your setup with the gear icon there for your settings. Swipe to the left, you could change your quality for super high quality or lower quality, which will save space on your SD card. I always like to shoot in the best quality possible. If you keep swiping over, you go to normal display, which is on your screen. We'll show you either normal 16 by nine, or you can change it to full screen. You also have your normal mode or pro mode, which will give you more features to unlock. And you can adjust the brightness on the screen itself. When you go into the gear icon, it'll show you your battery level, your quality, the tilt control, you can turn the tone on or off. And if you keep swiping over, you could do anti-flicker, um, moonlight mode, calibration, turn on the Wi-Fi, show your storage space, metering, and more options. So everything can be basically controlled through the camera itself. You just have to know where to go to navigate it. Again, using it, just playing around with it, you will figure that out in a short amount of time. It is not difficult at all to learn. Now for the M button, the mode button, this actually has a couple different functions. If you press it, single pressing it, it'll change the different modes. This is on all follow mode right now. So as I move this around, you can see the camera head goes in any direction that I tilted. Left to right, rotating up and down. You type press again, you get pan mode, which will allow you to pan left and right, but will not tilt. So keep it right in that orientation. Sorry about the screaming baby. Next one is follow mode. This is your traditional follow mode where it goes up, down, left and right that's the mode that most people will be using and keep pressing the button it'll cycle through those now if you want to lock on something you long press and hold in the m button the mode button so right now i'm holding it as you see the camera position is not changing no matter how i'm moving this the camera is facing the same direction i'm going to demonstrate these two when we start recording now if you want to recenter your camera all you have to do is double press the M button and it centers it right back to your starting point. Now to turn on the selfie mode, it's a quick triple press. One, two, three, turns around and it is now facing me on selfie mode. So it's a quick way to do some vlogging action without having to physically change the orientation of the camera itself to go back. One, two, three, goes right back to you guys. So now that we learned the basic functions of it as to how it works, we're gonna do some demonstrations, walking around, running, I'm going to show you what the different modes do as far as all pan, pan only, all tilt mode, and lock mode. We'll see how well it performs. You're going to want to keep an eye on the stabilization. Make sure there's no vibrations. Make sure it's not wobbly, jittery, any jello effects. Also, you're going to pay attention to the audio. There is an onboard microphone, so we're going to see how well it picks it up. Talking behind it like this and also doing selfie mode like this, we'll see how well the audio is. I'm not going to adjust the audio levels. It's going to be raw as it picks up in the microphone here. So let's get started with that next. Okay, so now we're recording on the Biotech Pocket Gimbal. We're filming in 1080-30p. I'm holding it about half arm's length apart. This is the audio coming out of the camera itself. And we're going to pan around here, see how the image quality is. I'm going to do some contrast with shadowing and bright sunlight. And I'm going to walk normal pace here so we'll see how well this looks as far as stability, saturation, and with the contrast. On the screen, although it's a tiny screen, looks like it is picking up pretty well. It is showing my time counter at one minute now. It shows I'm filming in 1080-30p and a full battery. I'm going to tilt up now to the sun, and we're going to walk like this. We'll see how the orientation is if it holds it right there in place 
and also the contrast with the sun showing through if this is adjusting well enough but on screen image looks good but we won't find out until I pull it in the editor but from what I can see it is doing a fairly decent job now again this is your normal mode where you tilt down and up pan left and right and the camera will follow your hand movements right now we're in pan only so I could pan left and right but when I try to tilt up or down it is keeping it on a level horizon there so I could go left go right but as I tilt the image is staying on the same level line there this is follow mode which we just came from so here's all follow mode and as you'll see it basically follows your hand movements to a T it's like an extension of your hand so I could roll left and right tilt up and down pan left and right and the combination of all three so for like a uh, maybe a stunt type video maybe doing like a following a skateboarder or a BMX rider or even a race car you get some really cool twists and turns for your particular shot that you're trying to get first again we're back in pan mode we want to go to all follow mode back to follow mode now this is your normal thing so if we want to recenter it double press it it's recentered now I'm gonna lock the camera and keep it fixated on you guys so I'm gonna hold in the mode button it says lock mode so as you see on this camera I'm moving the camera around as you see on this image it's not moving hardly at all it's keeping it fixated on the position on the position that I set it on so it keeps it locked that way if you want to you know adjust yourself if you need to move around you won't lose the subject in the frame once I release it it goes back to follow mode and back to normal filming mode I'm gonna do triple press now and now you can see me this is me talking to the camera this is the audio holding it arm's length as far as I could go forgot to mention too this is a 120 degree wide angle camera so you get to see myself and the surrounding area behind me so it picks up everything quite well I'm gonna walk around here and get you some different light contrasts here it is a little bit shady here it's bright behind me and we're gonna be coming back into some brightness I'm gonna walk over here into more sunlight We'll see if I'm washed out at all, or if it is picking me up fairly well. The screen, I'm still able to see it even in direct sunlight. And I'm going to spin around now. The sun's on me. Should be the, probably the best quality you'll see. Direct sunlight, fully lit, no shadowing. And now we're going to walk back into the shadows. Again, this is fully out of the camera, unedited. Did not touch the picture quality or the audio. And we'll find out during editing how well the camera is performing. I have used this for a handful of times just around the house just getting used to it. This is my first outside real life review with the Fiotech Pocket Gimbal. So, Okay so for the last demonstration we're going to do a running test. I'm in follow mode. I'm going to run directly towards you guys. I'm going to put it picture in picture so you're going to be able to see me running towards you and you're going to be able to see the image as to how well it's keeping it stabilized. So let's do that right now. So, again, I don't know how it looks, you guys already know, but uh, let's switch back to the main camera. Okay, so that was my demonstration portion of the Fiotech Pocket Gimbal. I have to say, this is a pretty cool little device. Now, I do have some thoughts I want to share about it. I have one or two not-so-good ones, which are not deal breakers, but just things I noticed, because I am pretty picky when it comes to camera equipment. I have to make sure it is something that is going to be suitable for almost everyone. Now, right off the bat, the only flaw I can notice is that there is no mic jack. There's no 3.5 millimeter jack to insert an external microphone. On day of today, it's breezy outside, and depending on the sensitivity of this microphone, it would be nice to plug in my Purple Panda mic or an external wireless device like I'm using right now. So onboard mic only does limit its performance capabilities as far as audio goes 
but that is kind of to be expected just because this device is so small. They could have put one in the bottom and took out the quarter thread, quarter inch thread tripod jack, but then you have no way to mount this on a tripod. So I think it's based on having the largest battery possible on this, which is a built-in rechargeable battery, and also keeping it user-friendly as far as different options go. So for beginner users, for people who are not super into making professional videos, it's not gonna matter all that much. For me, I prefer using external audio for clarity, for windy conditions. It definitely steps up your game a little bit higher than not using one. The other thing too is that you're not gonna wanna use this as a main camera, so to speak. The reason I say that is because the screen is so small, it's hard to pick up details in this. So I mean, I'll, although you can see what you're looking at, if you're doing close up stuff, wanna pick up fine details, make sure something's in the frame, you may have a harder time doing that with this camera just because the screen is basically the size of a thumb almost. It's only a little bit larger than my thumb. Now with that said though, there are some advantages to having this camera. Number one, it's really small and discreet. This thing, you know, fits in your pocket. I'm walking, holding it right now. You know, you could hold it like this. You can even mount up a rig so it's on your sweatshirt or jacket. Very compact, very discreet. Takes up very little room in your pocket, backpack, even on your shelf. It's going to be very minimalistic as to what this is going to provide as far as convenience. Now also, the capabilities of switching between 1080p, ranging from 24 frames a second up to 120 frames a second, is a nice wide range. For someone like me, that's ideal because I could do slow motion if I want to, although I typically keep it in 30 frames a second. Knowing that I could do that works out just as well. Also, going all the way up to 4K60 is pretty phenomenal. Keep in mind though, that this is gonna obviously eat up the battery more and fill up your SD card much faster. But that is to be expected on any camera when you are filming in 4K. Lastly, I wanna say that this comes in at a pretty good price point. I'm gonna have some links down below in the description for the Filotech website where it's available, also on Amazon. I've been keeping an eye on it. The prices actually have been fluctuating up and down a little bit between 10 to $30 on any given day. So you could shop around, try to find the best deal, but the links I'm gonna provide you are for what I found to be the best sources to buy from. Now, if you wanna get one for yourself, it's available on the Filotech website and also on Amazon. If you buy from Amazon with the link I provide, I do get a little bit of a kickback as far as commission for the sale. On there right now, as of today, it's available for $259. And for what you're getting, it's a very fair price, but you can actually save yourself a bit of money. On the screen as I'm showing right now, there's a little box. If you check that, it'll give you an additional $20 off. So you get this at $239. That's actually a really good deal because if you compare this to the competitor, the DJI Osmo Pocket, that comes in right now at $300. So you're gonna save roughly 60, even maybe more dollars off compared to buying its competitor. Now this is not DJI, this is Fiotech but they are up and coming. They put out fantastic products. I've reviewed other products before and I would not put my name behind it if I didn't think they made a solid product. So if you're interested in getting one for yourself, check those links out, compare the prices, go whatever one you find is the better deal. Amazon, you obviously get free shipping. If you're a Prime member, you'll get it relatively soon. For a Fiotech Fio website, it may take a little bit longer, but you may save a few dollars in the long run. So choose and compare whatever way you wanna go. Lastly, I just want to say, if you have any questions about this product itself, feel free to leave them down below. I will do my best to answer them or to steer you in the right direction. If you have any um, feedback as to the performance of this camera, I definitely want to hear from you. Let me know what you thought of the audio quality, the picture quality, the stabilization. As a whole, I think it's a good little device and um, very simple to use, user-friendly. You can't get more easier than that to have a combination of camera and gimbal that's basically small and compact. Now, I will put this out there. I would not give this to a child, although it is pretty tough and you know well-made. The gimbal is relatively fragile. You don't want to bang this around. You don't want to drop it. It could damage the motors. So to me, someone who has a nice grip on it, I even recommend putting a little mini tripod on it and you'll have a little handle to get a better grip on it and still be able to function it and I think you'd be good to go. So that about wraps up our product review of the Fiotech Pocket Gimbal. Fantastic little camera with being a camera and gimbal all in one. 
it's really a great product for people who are just starting out. People who do a lot of moving around, maybe have shaky hands, this is gonna keep your image nice and stable and user friendly and a good price point. I think it's a win-win for anyone who's looking for a new camera to purchase. Just keep in mind it is on the smaller side, small screen, but if you hook it up to your phone remotely through the app, you'll have a much larger screen to view everything. So there are different options out there depending on which direction you wanna go. If you did enjoy this video, I ask you to please give it a like. And if you wanna see more product review videos, I will put a link down below in the description to my product reviews playlist. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.